everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Mandy and I'm a full-time reseller. On this channel, I like to make reseller content. Today is going to be my what sold video. So I will go over everything that's sold on four different platforms. Uh, that would be Poshmark, Macari, Depop, and eBay. Sales definitely were up this week. Still not where I want them to be, but I'm happy that they were better than last week. So what do I have for notes for you guys? Macari, I don't have anything written down. Nothing weird over there this week. I think there was four sales. Poshmark, still pretty slow. I do have one label that is not tracking and I've reached out to the buyer to see if they received it. I did send something to Poshmark letting them know, hey, I dropped these off. I, I know I scanned it too at the kiosk, which is strange. Um, you know, normally that picks up and then says it's tracking, but for whatever reason, that label is not. So then they went in and put manually tracking. It hasn't changed. It's been probably close to a week. Everything else I sent at that time has been delivered. So I sent something to the buyer asking, you know, like, hey, did you happen to get this? Maybe there's something wrong with the label. I don't know. And I haven't heard anything back. So I don't know what's going to happen there. Uh, eBay, I had to cancel a sale, which is unfortunate because everybody knows it is not good to cancel on sales for eBay. I had been looking on Facebook and people were commenting in the Flip group, that is the app that I use to share my closet and cross list, that there had been some issues when you were delisting, relisting, that it was keeping duplicate items. I had never even thought that I should have to look for that because you're paying a service. Why should you? So um, that's what ended up happening. It was, I can't even remember what it was, but it was something. So I went back and started looking in Macari, eBay. I didn't really notice any on Poshmark. There were quite a few items that must have duplicated because I had two listings or there were items that were still on there that had sold. Some things had sold quite a while ago. I don't use Flip's sold detection or whatever they call it. Uh, you still have to manually go in and delist everything. So that's how I had been doing it on the app. You know, like on my computer, I would go in and say delist, delist, delist. But that doesn't help you when you have two listings because Flip always connects it to the URL. So if you were delisting, relisting, and a duplicate went out or it didn't delist the one that it should have, that's just floating around on you know eBay or Macari. So I'm assuming that's what ended up happening because then when you would delist it, it's only going to delist the one that was connected, if that makes sense. So going forward, I'm probably, I don't know. I mean, I'm always kind of looking for something new as opposed to Flip, just because the company as a whole, I do not like them. Um, I don't know if I've ever told this story in the past. I think I've told parts of it. Probably, it was like right when I first started um, reselling full time. It was actually a big part of the reason why I decided to quit my job was they had Flip as consignment. So you could put up lots and everything like that. And they had reached out to me at that point in time and offered me, I can't even remember what it was called. It was something to do where you would make lots and then they were um, essentially like flipped, flip managed lots. So they were like buying the inventory, I guess, from you and then people would sell it. So I was told, you know, you can make as many lots as you want for a week. You get $4 per piece and you just wait until someone, you know, wanted the lot and then you just send it out, you get paid and it's done. So, you know, in my head, I was thinking, well, this is great. This is guaranteed money, as many lots as I can make a week. And that lasted for, I don't even know if it was like three weeks, maybe. I can guarantee you the reason why I didn't pan out is because they were having so many people do it and so many people were going to the bins and just picking up absolute garbage because I got some of those lots over half of them were damaged stained it was just I mean that was the problem so then it was told to everyone that it would be three dollars a piece you know that's as much as they could give you and then all of a sudden it was just gone and if anyone is in that Facebook group anymore for the consignment piece, they have just completely abandoned it. 
they've told us for over a year, oh, we're, we're working on this, we're working on that. Like just do good business and let people know it's done. Like that's what irritates me the most. So I am never saying good things about Flip ever just because I don't think that it's a great company at all. So after all of that, what I guess I'm trying to say is I would be on the market for a different service. I mean, it would obviously take quite a while to move everything over. The only thing that I do like about Flip is it's cheap. Um, the other ones seem fairly expensive to me, but if they are, you know, working like they should, but it's like, I feel like everyone that I see that uses Vendu or List Perfectly, um, List Primer, I think they reached out to me once before and I heard nothing but bad things, so I just never got back to them. Um, I don't know if there's any other out there. One Shop, it's like everything I see, someone has complaints about all of them. So I don't know, you know, really which one to go with. I'm just going to stay with Flip for now. But now I know that I need to definitely be babysitting the app again and looking to make sure that, you know, there aren't duplicate listings. And then on Depop, once again, a whole bunch of offers sent to me and no one paid. So I thought I'm just going to do a little looking and see if I can figure out why they have that as an option. I went on a little bit of a rabbit hole on Reddit and from what I can tell from what other people have asked Depop, because other people are obviously upset that that's something that, you know, people can do. Um, you don't have to be 18 to have an account on Depop, I guess. So it is like a fail safe, I guess, so that these kids that want to buy the items, but their parents have to pay for it, they can put in an offer and then say like, hey, mom, you know, will you pay this? And it's not going to be taken off a card right away. To me, it's like, really? Like how many people are actually doing that as opposed to how much money you could make if that was a binding sale. So I don't know. I don't think it's going to change in the future. It's just if I wasn't making multiple sales a week, I probably would just get off of Depop because that irritates me beyond belief. Um, the amount of people that send the offers and don't pay for it. I do have a fairly large ThreadUp update that I just noticed last night. If you're someone that sells a ThreadUp, you might want to listen to this. So like I've said in many videos, um, my ThreadUp account, my oldest one, was still able to send in like Shein, Old Navy, um, Airy, I don't know, I can't think of any, like Maurice's, the lower tier brands, and they were still listing them and I was still getting payouts. On my newer accounts, it would say, you know, these are ineligible brands. We will still list them. And this is the part that is wild. They say, we'll still list them for a second chance. So I'm sending it to them. They're still listing it so that they can make some money and give the clothes a second chance, but they keep the money. I mean, I understand that they specifically say you will not get paid for it. So that's how they legally get away with it. But really, that makes no sense to me. Anyway. So up until, I'm not sure when, because I just noticed it, I'll put some photos here or a little video or something, what they're doing now. They're actually showing you which brands and which items that they listed that are you're not going to get a payout for. They are completely listed on their website. People can buy it and ThreadUp will make that money but you will not. So they must have just deemed like all accounts no longer will be able to do that. And then they're also showing you the brands that they just did not accept at all. So they must have thought there was damage to it or, you know, whatever that's new as well. So going forward, that really kind of puts, you know, a wrench in my system here with the Play-Doh stuff because in the past, you know, I would circle through Play-Doh a couple times if they didn't take it, throw it in the thread up box, make some money. Now uh, that's not going to be able to work, you know, for a lot of those brands. So I have to figure out what I'm going to end up doing with that. I did not want to, you know, hold it all for a rummage sale and throw it in a 50 cent bin. I do not have the space. It just doesn't seem like, you know, the greatest idea to me. So what I'm thinking I'm going to do is maybe have like another bin or something that will just be like the Play-Doh's reject stuff that has the brands Play-Doh's will not take and just see if I have like sizes and similar, you know, brands or styles or something and then just do like big lots of stuff. Like, I don't even know. Um, like, I don't want to sell a Shein tank top on its own, but if I had 
maybe five or six little crop tops that were all Shein, same size, not put a bunch of effort into it, probably just take one photo of it and throw it up on eBay for $12 or something. That would be a way to get some money back and not have to store a bunch of stuff. Probably wouldn't keep it up for too long and I think some of that stuff maybe will just get donated to the kids place in town. They are always looking for teen clothing. Um, yeah, I don't know. I might just try that out if it's not going well and things are just sitting, then I'm not going to waste my time doing it and I'll just donate it right away and maybe just be a little bit more mindful of what I am picking up for, um, Play-Dohs and try and find better brands. I don't know. This just really kind of sucks because that was so easy to just throw it in a box. But as we know, as resellers, we are not in control of other companies and they can change their you know, way of doing business at any moment. So then the last thing I do have written down, anyone that does do YouTube or, you know, you do use an actual camera for taking video, can you please let me know in the comments below which camera you have? I have just been using my phone, which is fine, but then when I'm filming something, I can't look stuff up on my phone. Uh, I bought one from Amazon. It was like $130 or something. I got it. It was not a brand name, which probably was my first problem. Um, the picture looked okay. It looked like it would probably do well for actual photos, but the sound was absolutely horrible. I know a lot of cameras you need to use uh, microphones, which is fine, but I was not going to spend more money on something that I wasn't completely happy with. So if anyone can let me know, if you are using an actual camera, please let me know. Okay, so let's finally get into the sales if you're still here. First on Poshmark is this Alberto Macaulay, I think maybe is how you pronounce it. I've had this for quite a while. It was a long ruffle flare skirt, kind of a mixed print. This ended up going for 22. This Johnny Was Top I got on Depop probably two or three weeks ago, I think. I found this when I was looking for those keywords and I was just kind of, you know, looking at different profiles and I think they had this for sale for $9. Maybe it was a little bit more. Um, after sale or after shipping and sales tax, I think it was like 18. So this was a pretty quick flip. I did get it home and there was a small hole in the front. I don't even know how, how uh, returns work on Depop. I should probably figure that out since I do sell on there, but... I didn't give them a bad rating. I just didn't even rate at all. I figured, you know, I'll see if someone will still get it. You couldn't really tell unless someone pointed it out because it was so tiny, but I did note it and this went for 51, which is great. This is the dress that I am trying to figure out where it is in the postal system. Um, yeah, I don't know what Poshmark's going to do. Potentially they might just pay them back and pay me out as a lost package even though it technically wasn't accepted by the post office. I don't know. We'll see what happens. This American Eagle top I got at the bins not too long ago. I don't pick up a lot of American Eagle in tops, mainly only jeans. That seems to do the best for me. This had a couple different, you know, things going for it. It was plaid. It was darker for fall. It had um, kind of interesting sleeves and it was an extra large, which you don't always see. This ended up going for 15 this Wrangler, the Black Crows shirt, I got at Walmart. They were doing big clearances and just everything was a dollar on these racks. I picked up, uh, let's see, what did I pick up that day? The Black Crows, a couple different sizes in this, and then also the Counting Crows had a couple shirts that I picked up, and then some plus size um, Disney like Stitch t-shirts. They all obviously are all new with tags. This one was went for 12, which isn't a lot, but I did only pay, you know, a dollar for it. And I think this has almost paid for everything I bought that day. My mindset was kind of thinking Christmas presents, we are going into Q4, they're new with tags. This is, you know, a pretty well-known band. So hoping that the rest of them go. These were a pair of Victoria's Secret, part of their bridal collection. They say I do on them. Uh, they weren't extra small, but they were new with tags. I would not have gotten them if they weren't new with tags, and they did go for 17 Flying Tomato, this brand, I don't really pick up so much anymore. I feel like it had its moment probably like four years ago. This one had kind of a unique um, colorway and pattern, so I thought I'd give it a try. I got it at the bins for 15 
This was actually a really cool sale. I'm not even, I'm not sure how you pronounce this. Demania, maybe? Um, as soon as I saw these, I was pretty much willing to pay whatever was going to be on the price tag. They did have them at Goodwill for $19.99. I did have a $5 coupon to use, so I got them for around $15. There was a lot of attention on these on pretty much every platform I put them on. And I think they sold within a week for um, an offer of $70. Nightmare Before Christmas. This was another one that my mom had picked up, asked me to try and sell. It's like a tree that you can put ornaments on that come in the box. And this went for $16. This Old Navy dress, that was the other thing. On Poshmark, I did do liker, or offers to likers, 20% off my entire closet. And I forgot that I had this dress in here. I actually had this dress in my own personal closet because I was going to keep it. So I had to take it out and someone else is getting it. Next up is this Polo Ralph Lauren hat. I just got this at the actual Goodwill bins when I went a couple weeks ago. A lot of interest on this on all platforms. This normally does fairly well when it does have that little pony and the guy on the front. And it did go for 15. Kona Soul, this was just the tankini top. It was new with tags, I think. Yes. You could also put straps on this. It kind of had a flowy, like mesh look to the bottom. This went for full asking price of 22. These Columbia pants I picked up at the bins not too long ago. I am pretty particular on what I do pick up from Columbia. Normally women's bottoms in bigger sizes do better. These were a size extra large, like a cargo. They were skinny, but they were like a jogger too. These ended up going for 24. This Belle Ambra maybe is how you say this. A dress, it was linen. This came in that JTC liquidation box or whatever it was called. There was a small stain on it. This ended up going for 16. That one to Macari. Judy Blue, these were a slim fit ankle length, size 31. These ended up going for an offer of $22. Next up is Cabbie, just a sleeveless blouse. This I picked up at the bins. I pick these up quite a bit. They would hardly weigh anything. They aren't quick movers. Sometimes they will move a little quickly, but they do end up going eventually, and this did go for $19. Next up is this vintage 1991 Barbie supermarket food stand. This was actually mine. I do have the conveyor belt thing too. I sold these separately. My parents were going through a bunch of stuff at their house and <laughs> had me and my sister kind of sit down and be like, do you guys want this stuff or what are we doing because I can't be here anymore. So my sister had her kids look at it, some of the stuff she kept, and I am selling some of the other stuff that is worth something. This ended up going for $12. There was some pen marks on the back, so I felt that that was fair. Can Can, this is another brand that I'm kind of specific on which styles I pick up. They have to be something current. Um, some of the skinny jeans can still do okay, but I try and pick things that are light and distressing, flare, wide leg, boot cut, something like that. These were a size 30. They were in excellent condition and they did go for $22.50. Next up are these Lululemon jogger pants. These I picked up at Goodwill not too long ago. I did pay $7.99. And they ended up going for an offer of 40 Tommy Bahama, I have been doing well with this brand in women's tops recently, which is kind of strange. Normally, I always did well with the women's dresses, but for whatever reason, tops seem to be moving. This one ended up going for an offer of 24 Picked this up at the bins. It was linen, so it was very lightweight. This is another style that I have been doing well with. I sold two tank tops similar to this, like that crochet... Um, like loose knit Y2K look. This would be like a micro mini dress or a tunic type top. This ended up going for my full asking price of $23. Asos, I think is how you pronounce this brand. It's a Swedish, I believe, biking company um, for clothing. And this was picked up by my cousin. She started going to the bins not too long ago. She found a four piece set. It was, um, like a sleeveless top, a top with a sleeve, this one, and then a jacket. So all I have left to sell is the jacket. I've been splitting some of the commission with her. Um, this one I did let go for 55 just because I'm trying to sell it so that she can get her money for it. So this is definitely a brand to keep your eye out for. Teddy Fresh, someone did end up bidding on this for $10.99. It was not the person I talked about last week, which is fine by me. I'm happy to see it go. 
Intimately Free People. This was a large bodysuit, new with tags. I've had this for probably two years. It has been to Play-Dohs multiple times. It has been on all of my um, platforms. I've marked it down. No one has bought it. I think I even put it in live shows. So I finally flipped it to auction for $7.99. Someone got a great deal. Old Navy Cheetah Print um, Jumpsuit. I originally bought this for a live show because it was new with tags. Uh, this one ended up going for an offer of 18. Another Old Navy sale. These were a pair of brown linen blend pants. They were also new with tags and a medium tall. That is one of the best um, sizes for me for selling in like these linen pants is medium tall. I don't know why that is, but I sell quite a few in that. This did end up going for an offer of 20. This J. Crew. normally I do fairly well with J. Crew. I have had this forever. Um, here it's kind of showing that it is a swimsuit cover-up. It could have been worn as a dress too. I've had this for so long I decided it was time to switch it to auction. If no one was going to buy it, I'd send it into thread up. So it did end up going for $8.99. This J. Jill dress I picked up just based on the style of it, the print, and it was a 3X. This I got at Savers, probably paid like $8 or so, and this ended up going for an offer of $27.75. These were the first one of those colored pencils that went. I did um, a haul on that. I can't remember when that was, maybe a month or so ago, maybe two months. The comp that I had showed was for $19.99 with free shipping. I think I missed that part when I was looking at when I priced this and I thought that people had paid shipping. So I priced it a little high um, thinking I'd get offers. It did end up going for an offer of 12 with 4 dollars shipping. So it was pretty close to that $12.99 comp. I still do have five more of these, I think. So that one um, has paid for all of the colored pencils. So hopefully these keep moving. Fresh Produce is another brand that I have 100% sell-through rate in. I don't know if I've ever picked it up in anything other than a dress or a skirt. I don't think. Um, this one was a size medium, just a nice pullover dress. This one ended up going for an offer of 25. Now on to Depop. I picked this shirt up at the vintage store in town. They have a table where you can get one for five or two for eight, I think. It's stuff that they must not want to sell. Maybe it has a small stain or they just don't think people are interested in it in this area. I picked it up mainly because of the graphic. It reminded me of Cool Borders if anyone used to play that on their PlayStation when they were younger like me. This ended up going for an offer of 14. That is definitely something I am noticing on Depop is people don't want to pay very high for anything. Uh, which is fine. I mean, as long as I have a small enough cost of goods and their, you know, selling fees are gone, even though there's still the transaction fee, I'm okay with it. Next up was this Japana crop top, um, like denim type thing. This was new with tags that came in that JTC thing as well. It was a size large and this one also went for an offer of 15. And then the last one to go this week was this thermal. This type of print where it almost looks uh, tribal or kind of like the Affliction shirts, I have been noticing are quite uh, popular right now. And one of the keywords I've found is cyber goth is apparently something that is um, like is tied with this design. This was just Faded Glory. So I'm guessing this was probably at Walmart, I think is where that is. And it probably only sold for $8 new. Someone did end up offering me 14. And this had a lot of um, attention on Depop and Mercari. So looking at the totals for this week on Poshmark, it was $376 for 15 items sold. Macari $75.50 for 4 items sold, eBay $350.93 for 12 items sold, Depop $43 for 3 items sold. So that was a gross sales total of $845.43 and then after average cost of goods were taken out and the platform fees, that leaves me with $549.92 for 34 items sold. So going into next week, still obviously doing the same listing. Thrifting has been getting a little bit better. I did have a pretty good bins day yesterday. It was cooler in there. For whatever reason, it was only me, which was great because it's so chaotic when there's a bunch of people. I really took my time and, you know, looked piece by piece. So I got quite a few good things there. 
Um, the normal Goodwills are still pretty hit or miss. There's been quite a few times in the last week that I've just gone and there's been nothing. So I'm hoping maybe that changes here a little bit. I do have an unboxing video that will be coming up shortly. I got a Goodwill, Goodwill Blue Box, I think maybe is what they're called, of hats. So hopefully that will be good. That is not the mystery um, company I was talking about on last video. I don't know that I'm going to do that company. We'll see. So I'm still not going to say the name, but stay tuned for that. I did miss last week's Friday video. I just ended up not having enough time. So this week I am going to make a couple of those videos just so I have them prepared. So stay tuned for that. If you are new, I am making smaller videos like five to eight minutes probably. Um, just going over a quick overview of different, I don't even know what I want to call it, like styles of boots or different cuts of skirts and dresses or different sleeve types, that type of thing, just so that it will help you elevate your listings a little bit more as opposed to just saying short sleeves, you know, and really it might be like a puff sleeve or something along those lines. So if you are not subscribed and you are interested in that, please make sure to hit the button. And as always, if you enjoyed today's video, please make sure to give it a like. It really helps out the channel and I really appreciate it. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!